Next, we examine the Git workflow very carefully. In this section, you will see quite a lot, and you will do quite a lot if you follow along. By the conclusion of this section, you will be well versed in how to use Git and how Git works internally. For the remainder of this presentation, you are encouraged to follow along. I am using Nitrous, as I explained earlier. You are welcome to use whatever makes you most comfortable. If you are using Windows, be aware that the Unix command touch I use here is a shortcut to create a new file. You can use an equivalent technique like copy con file name and control Z to end and close the file. In this section, we will examine the Git workflow in detail. Let's set up a little Git repository to work on. We will create a directory for our practice. Call it Packed. Then cd into that directory and initialize git with git init. Now let's create a readme file. Add this one line in the file, Mastering Git by Tom Parkin. We can advise git that we want to track this file with git add and the file name. In this case, we could have simply used git add dot to indicate all files in the current directory and then make a commit with a simple message like this. The command git log verifies our efforts and shows us where this commit fits into the lineage of this project. We will talk more about git log in an upcoming section. We will use this repository throughout the presentation. Now let's take a look at the typical git workflow. If you are like most people, once you have begun using Git and become somewhat comfortable with it, this is probably your standard workflow. Write some code, add some new files, commit all changed files with git commit am and a message, repeat. And if your intention is to simply save your work, this workflow will suffice. We are here to explore a little and see many ways to leverage the very sophisticated features Git has to offer with the goal to improve your workflow. The added benefit is that you will be recognized as a Git expert and earn admiration from your peers. For example, the status command. I am sure you have used it quite a lot. A plain vanilla status will show a lot of information. It includes the files Git is tracking along with their status, that is, modified, deleted, etc., as we see here. These are part of the index. Those files in the working directory that are not included in the index are considered untracked files. We will take a closer look at the index in an upcoming section. There are numerous options available to refine this output from the status command. I recommend you experiment with these to find the combination that makes you comfortable. Personally, I like this combination, git status dash sb. You will see me use this often. With this simple common workflow, Git can capture, preserve, and maintain a historical record of the changes you make on a project, but we can do better. That was an examination of a common workflow for Git. In the next video, as we better understand some of the intricacies of Git, we will look at the staging process.